are tremendously helpful in helping you to become the person you need to be and helping you have the relationship you need to have. So on Sunday nights, our segment is gonna be Q&A. Now we get all types of questions from couples who are in relationships or even singles who wanna transition into a relationship and just don't know what to do. They're just trying to figure this thing out. And so that's what we're designed to do on Sunday nights for 30 minutes is to really do a good job answering your questions. So let me just make a quick announcement. I just came back from London. It was an amazing experience. Yeah. Uh, I had an opportunity to speak to a number of organizations. Uh, we did television and radio in London, and we're excited you did. about why I, I did. I stayed home. Well, we're one, so I say we, right? <laughs> but uh, yeah, she and stayed the home. And of the home with the kids. Yes, but I was out there grinding, doing what's necessary to really help marriages survive and help singles get to where they need to be. So listen, we want to dive right into it. And we have a few questions that we want to start with. And as we're talking, if there are any questions that you have that really uh, you've been struggling with trying to find an answer to, please do uh, ask your question and we'll post it and respond to it immediately. The first question is this. Hey, hey, Alicia. Uh, hey, Alicia. When it comes to the order of the house, how would a wife help a husband understand his role as a visionary and leader if he's not really clear on what that looks like? Mm. You know, I, what, when I hear that, I, oh, I right away think about how there are so many men that don't know their place and don't know their role in society in general because they haven't had a good representation. Possibly they didn't have a father in a home or mm -hmm. whatever their experience was. They saw things a little bit backwards. Maybe mom was running the household. So he's kind of expecting you to figure it out and know it. And he's just a, you know going to follow your lead and good guy, but just maybe doesn't know his place. And you're wanting him to raise up as the leader in your home. And, you know, I find that a lot of times women are speaking to the negative things, right? Like right. every man has a seed buried within him, every single man, every woman too, but every man has a seed buried within him. And it's your job to speak to the seed. So think about when you first met him, all of the potential that you saw in him. Maybe he was, you know, good with words or maybe he was really good with people or maybe he was just, you know, good, a handy guy, whatever it was. You saw that potential in him and you spoke to that thing and you noticed that that brightens him up a little bit. So I think that what women need to begin to do is speak more life to their spouses and speak to the seed so that he feels the confidence can raise up in that place and do that as yeah. opposed to speaking to the weeds. Cause I feel like a lot of mm -hmm. women nurture and water weeds in their husband. They talk about whatever bad qualities he's lazy. He doesn't know enough. He can't do this. He can't do that. And always giving life to that by speaking to it. What about all the good qualities? What about speaking to that? I think a man seeing that has a lot to do with him actually having the confidence to feel mm -hmm. like he can raise and become the leader of the home, yeah. the visionary of the home. I think that that does make sense. Um, also, I think it's important that couples learn to have what we call working operational definitions for things. Like the reality is in terms of the order of the family, we know it's God, it's Christ, it's the man, it's the woman, it's the children. That's the order that God put in place. So by virtue of our biology, our physical makeup, we are positioned to lead. But we do know that there's a difference between positional leadership and real leadership. Just because you're in the position of a leader doesn't mean that you have any clue on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of men, unfortunately, because we operate in that role of being a leader, we think we know. Right. We think we know how to lead other people. We think we know how to lead ourselves. And a lot of us are still trying to figure that out and, and understanding what that means. So I think it's important be, uh, that a couple come together and really define what leadership in a household looks like. Yeah. And if they don't know what that looks like, delve into the scripture, read books. You know, seek wise counsel to see what practical daily to do's one must do to be a leader in the household. And I think I think it takes just being realistic. I think a lot of times men probably feel like they got a front and fake like they know what to do when right. they don't. You know, and then we as women, we looking at them and expecting them to know what to do when they don't. So there's all these pressures in, in play and everybody is faking. <laughs> but I think that if you come together and figure out a way to honor the differences in the both of you so much to the point where you're able to work together like a smooth moving train as opposed to conflicting with each other because you know I'm 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 a woman and I'm you know I have my whole life going for me I've got my car I've got the business together I've got the money and a lot of times our husbands don't right in certain cases and so we want to lead and I think that 
uh, a lot of times women mess up with that and thinking that leading has to do with money or certain power plays like that when that's not what true leadership is. If you want your husband to become the head of your household and the visionary of your household, sometimes we have to stand down. Yeah, that's true. Because you know what? When we first got married, I didn't know everything I needed to do. And when it came and to- And neither did I. That's true. <laughs> okay. And when it came to really uh, figuring out how to do certain things, because it was my role as a man to do it, she didn't step up and say, all right, well, I got this. You can't figure it out. She sat back and was willing to allow me and to wait. crash and burn and learn through trial and error until I got it. But another piece of the part. And help. Yeah, and help. But another piece is this. Men sometimes can't receive from their wives. So if I'm a leader and I'm operating out of ego, right, or emotion, I can't receive from you because you're supposed to submit. And so that's a part of the problem. We need to learn how to be students of one another and teachers to one another so that we grow together. But one of the things that has really helped me is surrounding myself with other great men that I can glean from. You know, I talk about the hub and spoke support model and how every individual needs to be surrounded by people who are just as good, if not better. So if I want to know what it means to be a good father, there's somebody in my circle I can go to. Uh If I want to know what it means to be a good husband, is somebody in my circle I can pick up the phone and talk to and I can glean from their wisdom. And being surrounded by great men makes me a better version of myself. It helps to make me more of a complete man, right? Mm-hmm. So if I understand what manhood really means, it manifests in the area of being a husband, being a father, handling the finances, being a businessman or doing well within my career, whatever the case may be. So surrounding yourself with key people is Unfortunately, a lot of men don't have that. You know, women have that. Like, we do that. We pour out to each other all the time. We're always talking snot and crying, you know, all of that to each other. We have no problem. Women will get naked in front of each other. We'll, like, compliment each other. Like, we're so free to let our emotions flow. And a lot of times men don't have that. Men need that. We do. And oftentimes, to your point, we run to our own cave. We try to figure it out on our own, but we can go. We can only go as far as the, the level of wisdom that we operate in. And so if our level of wisdom, as great as it may be, is limited because everybody plateaus, it's important that you gain new knowledge, new skill, new perspective to figure out how to move to the next level. Yeah. And as men, that's what we need to do. So hopefully that helped. But here's another powerful question, and then I want to open it up to all of you on Facebook now who have questions. This is a deep one. What does bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh oneness really look like in a marriage relationship? You know, I often talk to, talk about how the church does a phenomenal job of teaching principles that we need to live by. And there's a lot of wisdom that we get from the word of God and from the teaching. But we don't always know how to properly walk that out or what that practically looks like. And, you know, when it comes to oneness, we must understand that oneness is not synonymous with sameness, right. meaning we don't have to be the same, right. yet we can still be one. I talk about how Adam and Eve are the original odd couple by design. So God didn't mess up. There was nothing wrong with what he created in me and what he created in her. We were created with our own uniqueness, our own specificity, right. our own self-expression. Mm-hmm. And even though in our individual creations, there are tendencies within us that are incompatible to one another, God put laws and principles in place to govern this union. And so where I have natural strengths and, uh, um, I don't know, abilities, she I'm covering her where she may not have those and vice versa. So we come together as two completely different entities to make a greater whole. And once we understand that compatibility isn't being just like your partner, but it's identifying the differences, it's celebrating them, and making them work for the relationship. Yeah. Now you have two different pers- two different perspectives because we're wired differently. We think differently. We process differently. But that difference actually is a strength that helps us to do things that we couldn't do on our own. Yeah, I love that. Um, one of my greatest mentors, who I love, Jane Duber, she um, shared something with me one day when I was just talking about how awesome my husband is, and he's such a great speaker, and this and that. And I'm going on and on, just coming and hawing about, you know, this isn't my thing. That's his thing. And she was just like, Danielle, all you need to do is do the dance, you know, like he's leading, but do the dance. Mm. And that hit me. And I was just like, yeah, like I don't need to be an equal in anything as long as I know how to follow the lead and I know my steps. If you know your steps, then your dance is beautiful and amazing and you make jaws drop. 
So I think that if if spouses would really get to know their partner, you know, knowing thyself is knowing your partner because right. you're one, right? right? So if you know your partner and you know what their needs are and you get and you meet those needs, both of you are meeting the needs of your partner, then there's a wholeness that takes place. I think about you and I, like when we do, when we realize that for me, I, I get energy in solitude. Right. So I love being with people. I love being on the stage. I love a good crowd. I love it. But it drains me. And so I need to get by myself. And when we learn that about me, like, why is she dragging? Why is she depressed? Why does she feel so heavy? Right. Well, it's because I hadn't gotten away from my four children and husband in a while. And so we learn to build that into my life. And it's important for us to find out what is it that our spouses need so that they can show up as their best self. That's oneness. Being willing to say, okay, this is what she needs. I'm going to fill that space. Or this is what he needs. I'm going to fill that space. And together yeah. we can be one and strong together. That's That was a phenomenal answer. Listen, send your questions in. I know you have questions. We have just a few minutes to address those. But just to piggyback on this whole oneness concept, it's important to understand that, listen, <clears throat> she will think differently than me because she's supposed to. Mm-hmm. And many couples have this, well, we just agree to disagree. And oftentimes they live their life in complete disagreement. Uh, And so I think that many couples participate in what we would call passive aggressive behavior. They just don't agree. You know, they're at odds on things, but they just let it pass. But it's festering on the inside of them. And eventually it becomes a crisis that they enter into because they've disagreed on so many different topics. And what happens is over the course of time, you begin to emotionally disconnect. So now there's a huge wedge uh, that exists in between you. And it seems like the further you are from one another, the harder it is to reconnect and come back together. Mm-hmm. So it's important that you practice the method of what? Marital negotiation. Mm-hmm. We talked about that com- countless times of not trying to compromise so one wins and the other loses and not constantly being in conflict where you're at a standstill, but try to negotiate through certain issues by honoring the perspective that your, br- your spouse brings to the table. Love it. Right? Yeah. All right. So let's see. What questions do we have here? You know, I guess everybody's so happy with what they're hearing. They don't have a single question. Somebody needs to ask <laughs> a question. You have questions. It's your time to ask. Go ahead. You know, when, when I was in London, uh, there were a lot of singles who were in the television studio audience. And I remember someone approached me after that session and they wanted to know. They said, you know, I've been single for 15 years. I'm ready to transition into a relationship, but I've been out of the game for so long. I just don't know what to do. How do I, how do I, I don't know, I don't know, uh, 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 get involved or get prepared for a relationship when I've, when I haven't had one for so many years. Yeah. Um, you need to get by yourself. Um, but I've been by myself for yeah, 15 years. Yeah. But you know what? Being by yourself, being single, isn't being by yourself. It goes back. It's always going to go back to you getting to know who you are and building your relationship up with God. That's okay. where it all begins. And it's like, but, but all of us need to do it. It's not just somebody who's broken up with somebody and has been single for a long time. It's all of us. I am so blessed to be with uh, some very close friends of mine working on this process right now, just because we need to. Everybody needs to unearth all of the gems and jewels that God has placed inside of us. Many of us don't know who we are. So we're taking our broke, busted, confused don't know who we are, broken and bitter from the last one, and mm-hmm. wondering why I'm still sad and lonely selves, looking for another relationship to be in when you still haven't worked on you and got your stuff together. And wow. I hear women say this all the time, well, I've been alone forever, and I, I've done all that. I've done all the getting myself together. And if you talk to them for 15 minutes, you can tell they are not together. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So I really believe that um, it starts by going within and working on you so that you are completely satisfied single. If you're not satisfied single, then there's a problem. Wow, I heard someone say, if you're single and sad, you're gonna wind up being married and mad. But if you're single and satisfied, you can become married and gratified. So who you are before you say I do is a a good inclination of who you're gonna be once you say I do. So during that I do, do, during the wedding ceremony, when you give your vows, you don't go through some metamorphosis or some instant transformation. You bring your past self into your married people know that. Married people know they that know all that. too well, <laughs> right? It, it's like it, as soon as you get married, that's when all of the daggone bones come flying out the closet. 
people people need to know when I talk to single women and they're so desperate to get married, like I, I wish I could just make them download a 24 hour pill in the day in the life of marriage. It wow. is hard. There's nothing easy about it. I mean, come on. Whatever it is that's in your mind is fantasy and something that you saw on a late night episode on Lifetime television. This thing takes work. There's a lot of benefits to it and we love it and we have figured it out and worked it out, but we had to figure and we had to work. Yeah. I just wish people had a realistic understanding of what marriage really meant and that if they knew what they were going mm -hmm. to embark upon, they would value that single time so much so that they would dig deep and really understand who they are and who they're meant to be before they tie up with somebody else. You know, I think neither men nor women are really ready all the time for marriage. And that's why premarital counseling is so important. We find that so many women are more interested in becoming brides than they are becoming wives. Because, you know, when you're a child, you have Barbies and you're thinking about that wonderful day, the wedding day and the dress and the honeymoon. And all of your mind is fixated on the fantasy of what that day will be like. But not everybody's focused on the day after. Right. right? So when they're when they're when, when they enter into marriage and they're forced to deal with all the responsibilities, the obligations of the relationship, it's too much. Right. Likewise, men, a lot of us have no clue because either we did not have an example or we had a bad example. I mean, when you consider the fact that women too, women too, well, right, yeah, right. We, we we've got bad examples yeah. too. You yeah. know, single family, single parent homes. Seventy percent yeah. of all of our households, particularly in the African American community, are uh, run by single parent mothers. Mm -hmm. I heard a crazy statistic, which is true. It said that there were more children, black children, who lived in a two parent household during slavery than any other time in the history of this country. Because since slavery, it represented the breakdown of the family. And so as a result, single parent mothers or fathers, because there's many men who raise children on their own as well, raising these kids. And so they're seeing a piece and a one part side, of it. One yes, side. It's one or side. taught one side. Like yes. I always say, you know, my mom was just like, you know, Danny can do it. Danny doesn't need anything. Danny's good. Danny's strong. Danny's this. Danny, Danny, Danny. And it's just like, no. I don't want to be strong. Yes. I don't want to be tough. I don't want to be able to handle it myself. I don't want to be the end all to be all in my life. I don't want to be the alpha and omega, as wow. Esther White says, you know? Right, right. Like, I don't want to be solo and be all, all one. You know, I want to share my heart and my life and my passions and my sensitivity with someone. And she meant well, you know, she was, she meant well, it was, it was a compliment, but it's a mantle that I think a lot of women carry where they feel like I don't need nobody. I can do it all myself and be all by myself. And it doesn't work. And when men hear, well, I can do it all by myself. A lot of them say, well, all right, well, if you can do it by yourself, then be by yourself. <laughs> and they don't or want to maybe they let them well, do it. Well, you know? the problem is so many women have been forced to be strong. They've been forced to, to play roles that they were never designed to play. So they have a high level of femininity because that's naturally who they are. Right. But then a high level of masculinity because of circumstances that have forced them to be that way. And so if you have a woman who's playing both roles, mommy and daddy, she's cooking, she's cleaning, she's changing the guys on the car, she's, she's going to football games, she's doing all of the things that both a mother and father would do, and a young girl and a young boy grows up seeing that, they believe, okay, that that's what it's supposed to be. Right. So this young girl winds up being just like her mother yeah. by circumstance. A young boy grows up saying, I want somebody who's just like my mama. Right. And so if he's never seen a man take on responsibilities because mama did it all, then that's what he's going to be looking for in his woman. Yeah. And so this is how this cycle perpetuates from generation to generation and nothing ever gets fixed. Yeah, and, and I want to balance it out just by acknowledging all the single moms out there that are having to make it do what it do. You know, they are hustling. They are mommy and daddy. They are having to be both. Mm -hmm. um, by circumstance and they should be commended and honored for what they did my mom raised four kids by herself worked the third shift two and three jobs i mean my mom was every woman my mom was that woman i don't i i sit here in awe of her because i don't know how she did what she did because i'm a mother of four right. with a husband and it's hard so i mean i want you yeah. know what i mean so i want to acknowledge that but i do think that um unfortunately as a result of that i was given half the message and i think that you know, if parents do have the opportunity to say, you know, this is all that I do because it's just me. But when you move into, you know, dating and you're looking to to uh, find your husband or your wife, you need to understand that 
this needs to shift and it needs to be like thus and so, right. not you know just me doing everything. I think that we need to broaden that message. I, I totally agree. And I think the more we teach that, this is what we're talking about because we're living in 2017 where gender roles have become so convoluted. Like there's no, what is a gender role? Like this generation don't even believe that there are specific roles that men and women should play. Now there are roles natural to our biology. And then there's certain roles that we've been acculturated and indoctrinated to believe our gender roles. But I think it's important to have a conversation because what works for one couple may not work for another. Yeah. And I think that it's important to have conversations that couples are not willing to have because they're uncomfortable a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And so many people come in with expectations of what things should be and they never discuss it. Mm -hmm. And so therefore they remain unmet and then that's when the disappointment and the frustration settles in a relationship. Wow, 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 wow. Wow. We I need some questions, good. guys. Nobody's interested in asking the question because they're so blown away by all of this wonderful information. They can't even think, oh, do I have a question? But see, this is what we're here for every single Sunday evening we want to give you the opportunity to really ask the question that you may be struggling with because the answer may take you one step further in the direction that you ultimately want to go. You know, at the end of the day, Danielle, single people, a lot of them are fulfilled within their own life. Not every single person is looking for companionship. Right. Some, you know, when you understand that there's a relationship that you have with yourself and the relationship that you have with God and then the relationship you have with others, those are three different types of relationships. Some people are secure within themselves and have an awesome relationship with God. That's all they need. Mm -hmm. And for those of you, and that's all you need, great. Live life to the full. Enjoy it. Vacay. Work. Fulfill your purpose. We do what you're called to do. The question is, where do you submit questions? You can just put it right in the chat. Yeah, you can put your question right in the chat. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is no different than any other Facebook Live where you post a question, and as you post it, we will read it. But we should, invite. just thinking about that, we should come up with um, an anonymous question someplace, place where they can submit anonymous questions. I just thought about that. Guys, we're just doing this. This is like our first time doing this together, and this show is going to evolve, get better, more exciting. We're going to have a daily show. Mm -hmm. There'll be a show every day with different topics. So um, if you have suggestions like that, like that just came to me because I think it was Glory who asked, where do I submit questions? Put it if it's in a private, the Yes, unless it's a question that you don't want your name associated to, then we need to come up with a place for you to submit an uh, anonymous question. Well, we will figure do. that out. Yeah, we, we can figure do. that out. But just know that Facebook, everything that you do, every comment you make, every post you make is recorded and kept for the world to see. So if you have no problem, you know what? The question that you have for yourself may help someone else. So ask that question, but we will figure out a way to do that. Okay. Hey, Roxanne. Uh, Hi, Roxanne. See. It's been a while, my friend. I'm trying to find these questions. Daniel, read the question. Yeah, um, well, you just scroll past it, but uh, what I remember is Roxanne asked, how important is submission in marriage? Um, right? I think that was a question. Submission in marriage. Ooh, that's like a cuss word for some people, right? Um, here's the thing. I, I believe that that what the church has taught us about submission may have been incomplete. Um, Hassani and I submit to one another on certain things. And we talk about this all the time. You know, if a husband is the head of the house and he is awful at finances, but your wife is phenomenal at finances, who should submit to the person with the great skills and finances? The husband should submit to that because that's her skill. I think that as we were saying earlier, God has equipped you with different gifts. Those gifts are supposed to work together. You are one. So you're constantly submitting to one another in areas. Um, I think, unfortunately, what we have considered submission because of people who have been abusive and have taken advantage mm -hmm. of the word submissive is, you know, shush and be quiet. Speak when I speak to you. Do as I say. You don't have an opinion. You don't have any, any say in what we do or think. Or, that is not what God has intended. I think that if we figure out what areas that I'm good in and what areas that he's good in, and we work together, that is both of us submitting to one another. And then you have a peace around submission. As the as as men, as the head, we're the leader. But it does not mean that we know everything, nor can we do everything. You know, when you think about the president of the United States, he's the head of the state, the head of the nation. Mm -hmm. But he has a council of other yes. individuals who represent areas of expertise. So it is his job to then go to his counsel, his wise counsel, and to ask, 
How would you handle this situation? What do you think about that? So he's submitting to the wisdom of someone else and then takes that information back and ultimately makes a decision. Yeah. And as a leader of the household, as men, that is our responsibility to do. We should be teachable when it comes to our partners, because like Danielle said, there are areas of expertise that our spouses have that we don't have. And guess what? It's supposed to be that way. Because what happens is because you have so much ego and emotion and arrogance in relationships, now the natural complement becomes a competition. Mm. So now we're at, at war with one another to see who's going to win, to see who's going to have one up on each other. I, listen, I'm so secure in who I am as a man that if she's a better cook, boom, that's your area all well, day long. You can have all day long. No, area. you can keep that thing up. That's your area. You can cook every single day. Hands no, that was a joke. But whatever it is, if it's finances, if she's better, if she's a better organizer, why would I struggle? Because I'm the I wasn't listen, everybody has their own unique individual expressions and skill sets and natural things that they're great at. Now, that doesn't mean if you're not skilled at something, you should be comfortable with it and not grow. Thank you. I think so let's get you in a cooking class <laughs> right away. All right. Well, Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll talk about that. I want some rosemary chicken. We'll talk about that. <laughs> but whatever your area of weakness is, learn how to take that weakness and turn it into a strength. Learn how to take your strengths and to make your strengths even stronger. And listen, you are co-laborers together in this journey in life. So one of the things that we talk about, particularly when you are in pre-counseling, identifying the skill sets that each of you have, putting them on the table and figuring out how to make things work. Because you have your relationship, which speaks to your companionship, but you also have your marriage, which speaks to your partnership. And if we're in partnership together, we need knowledge, wisdom, and skills to make this thing work. Oh. That's what it is. Now, last point to that. Let's just say we're constantly going back and forth. She's not willing to go along with what it is that I think is best for the household. The, the system of submission says for us that we should submit to someone else's wisdom, mm -hmm. take that wisdom, bring it into the household. Now, listen, submission isn't gender specific. Just as women are uh, required to submit to their higher authority in terms of what God put in place, men are required to submit to their higher authority, which is God, right? So many men are not willing to submit to God. A woman wouldn't have a problem submitting to a man if that man was submissive to his God. But so many of us operate in our own flesh, operate in our own ego, operate in what we don't know, and we mess things up. And that's why going back to the whole Hub and support, hub and support spoke model. We have individuals, we have other couples who we glean from their wisdom to bring it into our household. So that's how submission Amen. also works. Amen. And now, Hassani Richard said he's going to give you cooking lessons. Could you submit <laughs> Thank to that? You, Thank I you, Richard. Thank you, Richard. I, I was submit. smiling when I saw that. <laughs> Richard, I'm going to put you on blast. Richard, I'm going to give you some cooking lessons. Well, you got to fly me back into Antigua for that to happen, and I received that. Right, James, James, not <laughs> James. I'm sorry. James, sorry. All right, great. So here are the questions that are coming in, and I and I appreciate you guys for you know bringing your questions. It's already 9:33. We passed our 30 minute mark. So I hope that something that you heard here today was helpful to you. I hope that you will have conversations with your partner based upon some of the information we've given. And if you have questions throughout the course of the week, inbox us so that we can do our best to address those and give you the clarity that you need so that you can have the life that you ultimately want. So we want to thank you all for participating in tonight's session. And we